The execute SQL function was added to FileMaker 12 to help reduce relationship clutter. If you need information from another table and there isn't already a relationship and a relationship isn't needed for any other features such as a portal, then consider execute SQL rather than cluttering up the relationship graph just like we did over here when we did the previous video and showed how to connect up the preferences this way. We would have had to have put this table occurrence on all these areas where we wanted to access the preferences. So it could have been up to three at this point, but if you had 50 tables, it could have been up to 50 uh, different table occurrences, and that's a lot of clutter. Now, over in the field section, we did work with, you know, it was a while ago, we worked with execute SQL, and it was called the total SQL function. So here we go, you can see, and we're going to refresh your memory about this one. This one was designed to total up our filtered portals and relationships. And we discarded it because it got too complicated after a while. But we're going to find out that a smaller job for Execute SQL, like this preferences, is much easier for it. But let's refresh your memory. And to do that, let's put in the Execute SQL function here, just as it appears. And you'll see there are four parts and one of them is optional. So the first part is the query. You need to query the table. So you can see here we specified invoices even though we're in customers. It's not a related table, it's the anchor. You can see how this is the anchor and this is the anchor. So we say select and that's almost always going to be at the beginning. Find this record essentially and grab the sum of the total field from invoices where question mark and now question mark refers down here to the argument the optional argument right here. Sometimes it's a lot easier to write in Execute SQL if you use this argument. It also prevents uh, you know, hacking into your database, so there's a lot of reasons why it's done, but for the most part, you don't have to worry about that. Just realize that it's easier to write this rather than trying to put this field reference up here. So we do it right here, and we say, does it equal KF customer's ID? And now we had to quote this because it had this underscore, and you know, SQL doesn't like this underscore. It doesn't like a lot of things, and it's a lot different than FileMaker. But, you know, this got a lot more complicated. And you can see that then there's an and and another question mark and things like that. So there's actually two arguments here. And then, of course, we have the field separator and the row separator. So you, uh, the defaults are tab and return, but we decide we make them empties. So it gets complicated, and, you know, you may not understand this completely, but hopefully when we work with execute SQL on this preferences, it'll be a lot friendlier. So let's cancel out of this, cancel out of this, and actually we're not going to cancel quite yet. We're going to go over into our preferences. And one of the things about SQL that's different than FileMaker is, is that it is case sensitive on finds. So when you log in with your account, you could type in the account in all caps proper case, lower case, it really wouldn't matter to FileMaker, only the password is case sensitive. So given that, since we're going to use get account name, it may not match what's in the account create. So we need actually an account create search field that will take it down to all lower case so we can make sure that we can search properly on it. So we'll come in here, make it a calculation. It'll simply be referencing account create, but then we'll put lower around it. Now we'll make sure that this is always in the same case no matter what and we'll do the same thing inside execute SQL with the get account name. Make that a text result. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now we've got that field. The next thing we need to do is go into the data viewer and write the execute SQL. So we'll go into our data viewer and you can see here's uh, the information from that relationship. We'll leave it there so we can compare it. So we're going to type in execute SQL open paren, couple returns just to separate them. Now all this stuff has to be in side of quotes except when we're referencing something that's going to be inside this you know this table. So what we're going to pass along, what we're going to say select is we're going to select a field over inside of our preferences. So we're simply going to go ahead and actually I should just type it right in here. We're going to say layout. Select the layout from, and we don't have to type this in all caps, but we'll do it just to make sure, 
preferences, got that spelled correctly, where account create search, that's the field, equals, and we'll do the question mark here, and then an end quote, and then a semicolon. So you can see we just re literally typed the whole thing out. Hit a couple returns, quote, quote. We don't really need anything separating because we're going to get one value here, so no worries. We, don't, we, we could just even stay with the defaults if we wanted to. And then we're going to put in lower and then our get account name. So now you can see that these are all going to be equal. The, the lower we used in the calculation will equal this. We'll make sure that we can find what we want. So let's see if we got this right. It's, it's a little tricky if you've ever done HTML. You miss a comma or a semicolon or a bracket or something and it doesn't work. So I'm crossing my fingers now that I typed everything properly. And it looks like we did. It was proper. It's getting exactly the same value as that. So this is a great little function to write. You can see how much easier it is than what we did with the tools before. And when you get an easy job with Execute SQL, even somebody like myself who doesn't know SQL very well can get a job done and can prevent cluttering up your relationship graph. Now we can use this calculation no matter where we are, whether it's customers or invoices or products or any other table, to go into preferences and grab what we want. All we have to do is change this to something else so we can say screen size. Evaluate and see it gets an 80. So it gets exactly what we want based on what we type in here. As long as you type everything accurately, it's going to do exactly what you want and be very easy to use. So what I often do is keep a you know copy of this or or you know uh, some basic execute SQL and just refer to it and change it as needed. That way I don't have to know everything and I can just simply you know make the little changes I need to and it works great for me.